and welcome to the Six Five Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners of Futurum Research, and on behalf of my team at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, welcome. We're glad to have you. In this spotlight session, More Insights and Strategy's Patrick Moorhead sits down with Charles Furland, the Vice President and General Manager, Edge Computing and Communication Service Providers at Lenovo, and Cedric Bourley, the Director of Capgemini Invent and 5G Labs Program at Capgemini. Their conversation covers the big themes of edge computing and what's in store for this emerging technology over the course of the next decade. This is going to be a great conversation. Let's go have a listen. Charles and Cedric, uh, welcome to the 6.5 Summit 2021. And thank you so much for speaking here on day three. Happy to be here. Yeah, maybe a great... Yeah, maybe a great place to start is uh, you can talk about what you do uh, at Lenovo and Capgemini. Maybe uh, Charles, we'll start with you. Sure. Thank you, Fab. Thank you, Patrick. So uh, basically at Lenovo, I run the edge computing organization. My team is responsible for developing the products, partnerships, the solutions related to edge computing. Excellent. Cedric, how about you? Yes, so on my side, I'm part of Capgemini. I'm in charge of the program dedicated to 5G labs. I'm running uh, the labs in Paris and the labs in Mumbai, uh, where it's uh, dedicated to industries and the uh, use cases dedicated for industries. I love it. So the two of you are at the forefront of, of edge computing. And, you know, it's funny, uh, I talk to a lot of people. I talk to uh, enterprises, I talk to CEOs of tech companies, and I, and, and, you know, there, there's a lot of discussion. Hey, is this edge computing thing real? Uh, and, and what's the uh, potential? Uh, maybe I can give this to this one to Charles. It's a legitimate question, to be honest, because we've been talking about edge computing and somehow it has existed in some shape or form for some time. Um, but really over the last few months, 18 months, we've seen a lot of pilots and proof of concept coming along. Uh, but I would say it is becoming real because now we're starting to see shipments and projects that are in the hundreds, if not thousands of devices all over the world. So definitely becoming real. Uh, definitely focus around where the data is actually created and, and all the use cases that requires data processing outside of the data center for better performance uh, or insight at the edge is where we're starting to see some uh, real interesting project at scale. Yeah, it's, it, what's been true since the beginning of IT is having your data processed as close as you can to where the data originated is always a smart thing. But there are, are some challenges uh, with edge computing as opposed to, let's say, uh, pulling it into the data center or pulling it into the public cloud. Uh, can, you, can you talk uh, about that, Charles? Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, you need to, the environment is very different, right? You're outside of a data center, therefore you need to have equipment that is ruggedized, that is uh, resistant to uh, shock and vibration, uh, that has uh, operate can operate in higher temperature range. And we've been collaborating very closely with Intel in developing an edge portfolio that allows us to really have that equipment out and about, uh, not in the data center. That being said, we understand the physical hardware is different, but there's two other elements that is actually crucial and are key challenges that we have to solve to make edge computing a success. The first one is the security. Now that you leave the perimeter of the data center, the device itself is at risk of being stolen, right? right? <laughs> uh, so we innovated in looking at ways to how do we anchor the device in a location so that it cannot easily be stolen. And more important, the data that it contains is now processed and stored in some cases directly at the edge and, and you want to protect that data. So again, we innovated in putting motion detection and using encryption technology and GPS fencing so that the device itself, it can, if it's stolen, cannot leak the data easily, right? And we have mechanism to lock down the data. That, that's one aspect on the security. The second one is the management. As you know, Patrick, we spent years mastering the tool set to manage thousands of, data, of servers and data centers. Now you have these servers in hundreds of thousands of locations. It's, you don't have any technicians, or if you have a technician that can go on site, that will take hours, if not days. Therefore, a management tool set that allows us to deploy 
in an automated manner and manage that environment is actually crucial. And this is perhaps as much innovation and in R&D we're spending in that area as in the product development itself. Yes, you almost have to have a virtual IT person there and be able to do everything that a, an IT person could do on site as you can uh, virtually. And you know, every time I go to a gas station or a retail store or a fast food restaurant, I see that server bolted to the wall uh, or just sitting on the ground and I'm wondering how much confidential customer data or credit card PII information is uh, is sitting here. So, so far, we've talked a little bit in the in the abstract uh, so far about uh, edge compute. Uh, Charles, can you uh, uh, talk a little bit about some real life examples sure. of companies using edge computing and, and doing it successfully? Okay, well, we're working with one of the largest drugstore company here in Canada that's actually rolling edge computing in all of their uh, of their drugstores, really to effectively run the store application directly in, on the premise. In case of a network failure, in case of a failure of a cloud, they have that redundancy over there. Um, we're also working with companies like BASF in Spain, where actually we've deployed the private wireless network and using AI to help technician do some uh, maintenance is on the uh, mission critical uh, chemical components and having a remote set of eyes helping them and having that video process directly at the factory. And finally, one of the most exciting projects we have is with the city of Barcelona. Uh, we've deployed a private 5G network over there. We're deploying edge computing in many street cabinets throughout the city to host various use cases, I think seven in total, that varies from a smarter tourism application to security, traffic control, um, and many other use cases in Barcelona. Yeah, and I know you're you're only allowed to talk about uh, the customers that allow you, but uh, I know that you're you're in a lot more interesting uh, deployments. So it's, it's it's just great stuff. So um, let's hear from Cap Gemini, uh, Cedric. Why do you think edge computing is getting so much more? relevant now? Is it because of 5G? Is it is it something else? What, what's going on here? Yeah, 5G and Edge are, are tightly linked one to each other. Actually, 5G is the, it's the first generation of mobile communication that is designed for the industries and only for the mass peak. Previous generation were dedicated to, to the mass public. And now we are really moving on the industrial side of it. And it's it's really uh, a differentiator. Of course, 5G will support gaming use cases uh, linked to uh, live streaming of videos. But essentially, the, the 5G technology is meant for industries, for smart cities, for smart factories. Uh, and it comes with a, a simple fact today. Huh? today the number of data that is being processed is exponentially growing. And, and now you, you need to get power, computing power very close to the network. And you need to get also limitation on the bandwidth that you will use, both for latency or real-time uh, qualities or, or even, even uh, sustainability uh, conditions. So it's really a link very deep between 5G and edge, and the, what we see is really this convergence between the IT world, the OT world, and the network world uh, overall. So that's that's typically what we have um, developed as part of the 5G labs. Uh, we have dedicated these labs to uh, the application of use cases for 5G and edge, really to see how smart factories, smart cities, smart retails, smart youth can benefit from 5G and edge to get new transformation and new acceleration on this uh, on these platforms. Uh, if I if I quote one very simple example, we have we have developed typically an autonomous intra logistic vehicle AIV, which uh, computes the calculation picking up a, a, a package inside a warehouse uh, at the edge and not only at the device side, taking the all the, the benefit from high power from edge side and, and cloud side with very less reactivity was powered by 5G network. So it's really impressive how all these technologies today are converging and, and it's really the time, right? Yeah, I'm really excited about 5G. It's the first G that's been truly fractional, right? If you uh, need uh, low bandwidth, low latency, you can get it. If you need high performance, uh, high latency, actually, actually flip those. 
uh, you can get what you want. So 5G is relevant uh, if you need 50,000 sensors uh, on, a, on an energy uh, pipeline, uh, or if you need a very low latency, high bandwidth on, on the factory floor. It's the first G to do that. And if you have a, a standalone network, uh, it, it all becomes a reality. So uh, we have both Lenovo and Capgemini here. Can you uh, talk, Cedric, uh, what you're doing with Lenovo to enable edge compute? Well, actually, we have worked with Lenovo from the beginning of the of the 5G Labs program. Uh, it's been a, a partnership going on for almost two years now. Uh, what we wanted, uh, very simple, it was we wanted the latest generation of edge servers that could be installed uh, for our industrial environments. So that's how we came out to to to. Uh, work with Lenovo on, on this path. Uh, second, we, we wanted to test the overall integration of a completely virtualized 5G uh, standalone network on, on top of edge servers. And that's really something that was pretty complex, uh, very interesting for, for deployment reason and, and, and a technical uh, upgrade, I would say, compared to, to the situation today. And, uh, and we managed to do that with, uh, with Lenovo. And, and last, we also wanted, obviously, to get devices uh, and uh, smart glasses, tablets, laptops connected through uh, 5G standalone. And, and uh, that's to cover the end-to-end -end, uh, of the uh, of the use cases and, and, and the reason why we have done this labs. And Lenovo has been yeah, working with us very closely since the beginning. It's been a, a great achievement so far. Yeah, as an industry analyst, we track uh, different vendors, and I think you made a, a very good choice. I've been very impressed with uh, Lenovo's offering uh, in this in this space. Uh, there seems to be an offering for pretty much any uh, edge use case uh, out there. And uh, Charles, I'm not saying this just because you're on here, but I think you've done a, a great job uh, realigning uh, Lenovo uh, over the past couple of years uh, for this market. So. Uh, let's talk about the pandemic, right? Everybody, we always have to talk about a, the pandemic uh, on uh, on a video here, but I'm curious, uh, did it have any impact on the evolution of, of edge computing? Um, it, it certainly opened up the, many of the use case for greater automation, less staff or personal on-premise, uh, and everything that could be automated through AI is act or artificial intelligence is actually a good use case and that picked up a lot of momentum. Uh, I believe though the major change and transformation was around how the financial model were constructed around uh, around edge computing. Um, CapEx and expenses were perhaps a little bit more uh, challenge and looked uh, very carefully. Therefore, it opened up a fantastic opportunity for Lenovo ThruScale, which is a pay-as-you-use model that allows customers to consume and deploy edge computing and pay as they grow. We meter the power consumption of the system itself. Therefore, uh, the more the system is utilized in a month, the greater the invoice and, invert and vice versa. If the system is only likely used, the monthly payment are reduced. Uh, that really appealed to our customer. That through scale offer, I think, was really picked up momentum following the pandemic because a lot of the customers wanted to align their expenses with operational charge rather than capital expense. Dedrick, how about you? Uh, have you seen anything change in edge computing uh, with the pandemic? Uh, for, for me, the, the key learning of this crisis is that uh, in order for the industries to be resilient, uh, a constant and direct access to the data and the control of the processes is completely mandatory. We have seen that in, in supply chain, we have seen that in hospitals. It's uh, working remotely can only be done through a complete uh, control of the data. And, and that is made possible by intelligent algorithms, that we need to execute real time close to the, the location of the production of the data. And uh, it's uh, close to the device. So it means new means, new architectures, new hardware, new software, and obviously a new connectivity. And that's really why uh, we can't imagine what would have been the pandemic like 20 years ago if we hadn't had this technology. And I guess 5G and Edge are, are really now uh, the, the proof that it can help and it in the future crisis will be more resilient thanks to this progress i'm pretty sure yeah i saw some incredible mobile uh, applications and i'm not talking about smartphones i mean they included smartphones but essentially a full hospital had to be set up in a in what used to be a farm field 
and they had to set up a, a, an IT shop with servers, networking, and storage with mobile devices doing everything uh, 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 real time. And I, I was actually impressed at how quickly uh, those were those were put into play. And and also, even even uh, I saw um, restaurants who had. Uh, reset their IT to be able to better serve people. Let's say when you pulled up in the parking lot, you had to tell them what number of the parking lot you were in so they could deliver food to you. And so these were these were very quick changes that only could have been uh, done uh, uh, with computing that was uh, closer uh, to the edge, but uh, very impressive nonetheless. Uh, so there's a lot of competition in this space. Uh, for edge computing. Uh, Charles, uh, this one's for you. What are things that, that distinguish uh, Lenovo over some of the other, uh, uh, over the other vendors out there? I, I already talked about, you have a super wide array uh, of options, uh, whether you, know, you want something in an elevator shaft, uh, you want something bolted to the wall, you have a raised, tor a raised floor tile uh, in the edge in a huge grocery store uh, of some sort. Yeah. Well, thank you, Patrick. I think what is super exciting about our, our Edge offering is really the coming together of our three main business units, right? Within Lenovo, we do have a PC or laptop business that is doing super well. And absolutely, they understand how to build ruggedized systems, laptops that we build, that we put on our notebook on our backpack we drop them we spill coffee and they keep running for years right uh, and how to produce these uh, ruggedized components at scale in the factories is super important and they contributed a lot to our edge computing strategy similar with the motorola or the mobile colleagues where often these edge computing devices are in remote location where there's no physical network connectivity and we use we need to use uh, wireless communication uh, well, that's all good. However, most of the time, these edge servers are in a cabinet in the manager's office in the back store somewhere. Therefore, there's a very limited signal that comes in. And we work with our Motorola colleagues to optimize the wireless communication so that we have the optimal transmit and receive out of those systems. And finally, the data center division that really contributed to high reliable ser servers, high performing servers so that you don't want to have, you don't want to service them every two years. You want to install them and let them running uh, for four, five, six, seven years, basically. So it's really these three division of the PC, mobile and data center group coming together that made our unique uh, edge portfolio. And that I think sets us apart because we have know-how from all of an expertise from all of these different groups that really uh, come quite handy when we develop our edge portfolio. You know, that's really exciting. And, you know, if there's one big piece of feedback I've given to all the Lenovo senior executives is, hey, find, uh, find innovative ways to leverage all parts of uh, Lenovo the, across the entire company. And I'll also bet that services are, are involved uh, as well in that. Uh, to, to you know, add to that trifecta of of capability. So I think that's super exciting. Thank you for so, pointing it out, Patrick. You're right that I should have mentioned that the ability to service in 180 market is really important when we're talking about edge computing. By nature, these deployments are highly distributed, indeed. Yeah. The the other thing I'm following uh, with you is your vertical integration. You're one of the few companies that has a lot of of vertical integration uh, in in what you do. So uh, great great stuff, Charles. So let's talk about the future, right? The Six Five Summit is a thought leadership summit. We have talked about the evolution of edge computing, kind of what's real, how how we define it. But but uh, maybe I can start with you, Charles, and then Cedric. What are you most excited about uh, in in the future of, of edge computing? I mean, have we arrived and we stop innovating? Of, of course not. Uh, of course what are, not. What are you seeing out there for the future? Optimizing power consumption and cooling temperature and power consumption and research we're doing on liquid cooling and all of this is super exciting. Uh, I think one uh, more realistic immediate um, Next step is the fact that we've deployed use cases using a specific device within the application and then a second application with a second device and all that. 
what we'll see over time is that you cannot have six, seven devices in the store or in a gas station, each from, uh, each fulfilling a specific use cases. So we're look we're we're working very closely with our partner to consolidate all of these on on more powerful computing devices that actually host in virtual environment all of the use cases needed to operate in that location. Yeah, I always it always was interesting. You walk into some of these edge sites, <clears throat> and they have four or five different boxes. It reminds me of a a data center in you know 1992, yeah. uh, with different boxes for different applications. And I totally understand the sprawl, but my gosh, that's about as inefficient uh, as as it gets. And if you have a very reliable system that's there, you don't have the risk of a single point uh, of of failure. And you're secured because these applications are virtualized. Uh, so that is definitely the way to go. Cedric, uh, how about you? What excites you about the future? What are you looking at? Well, typically, the, the great one of the greatest interests that we see for 5G and Edge is typically on the healthcare sector. I look forward to see what these technologies will bring for the uh, assistance to the patient, for the augmented operating room, for everything linked to the mobility connectivity for uh, for patients transiting from home to hospitals, from uh, taking care of patients with imagery. That's the typical use cases for healthcare that we do believe great uh, future related to, uh, to 5G and edge. Really interested to look forward to that. Yeah, I love that use case. Uh, it leverages kind of the best of edge, which is it's portable, uh, low latency uh, and and high performance and the ability to disconnect and not to have to be connected all the time. It's better when it's connected, but hey, if you're in a place that doesn't have coverage, you can get it. No, that's a that's a great uh, a, a great use case out there. So, gentlemen, uh, this has been uh, wonderful, but unfortunately, uh, we are at time. Uh, I just want to thank. Um, you, Charles, and Cedric for coming on to the 6.5 Summit 2021. And I really appreciate for you making day three a lot better. Thank you, Patrick, for having us. Thank Thanks, you, Cedric, for the great collaboration. Excellent. Thanks, this, is, this is Pat Moorhead with more insights and strategy. Hope you're enjoying day three. We have a lot more great content and speakers to go. Have a great day.